police military men they can be very romantic and all that they just like sweep you off your feet i know that this night is shining and more kind of thing discipline discipline and discipline then we talk of patriotism. You must love your country. Responsive people you can ever marry as responsive. Today is a congratulatory home visit shoot to Major General Abdul Khalifa Ibrahim. His new promotion in the office of Nigerian Army from Brigadier General to Major General. I will tell you something that I've never told anybody before. I have never asked him for anything without getting it. He always delivers. He has never, not even once. By the way, we are wearing similar dress as if we planned it. So that's very good. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Behind every successful man, there must be a woman. Mrs. Ibrahim also revealed the secret on how to become a good wife and how to manage the home successful as a wife of a military person. Who you look at determines what you look like. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. You tell people, you know, failure is part of winning strategy. It For is. every winner there must be, you must fail. Yes. And that failure is, is part of your strategy to mm, win. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, anytime you fail, there is a lesson to be learned. Yes, yes, yes. You yes. use that lesson very well in your failure. Yes. Congratulations, Major General, sir. Thank well, you so sir. much. Thank sir. you. Congratulations How are to your you? new officer. How are you? Well done, sir. Yeah. Wow. Sir, this is lovely. I think <laughs> I love this. Yeah. Well done, sir. It's by Thank my you. officers and men from 7th wow. Division. Yeah. I know you're a very amazing person. Hello, good evening. Yeah. It's good my wife. Ma. Oh, yeah, congratulations, welcome. ma. Thank you very much. Yeah, well done, ma. Thank you. I celebrate sir. you yesterday, sir. How has it been? What about the experience so far? Behind every success, there must be a story. We'd love to share with us for those junior officers or the world at large. My name is Major General Abdul Khalifa Ibrahim. I am a senior military officer, and my branch of the army is the infantry. And uh, by the grace of God, I am working in Meduguri as the General Officer Commanding 7th Division. I'm acting actually because I was appointed as Brigadier. And uh, why we have this is because I want to celebrate my promotion. Uh, I was recently promoted from the rank of Brigadier General to Major General. And uh, we just thank God for that. It's a long journey. I went to the Nigerian Defense Academy in September of 1987. And uh, when you look at it, it's seven to now, it's about uh, over 33 years. Over 33 years? Yes, yes. Well, if you remove the five years of training, <laughs> then uh, I've been an officer for 28 years. Wow. It's quite a long time. So <laughs> it has been a long journey, but. Uh, <laughs> We thank God, and uh, my wife has been very supportive to me. We've been married for so many years now, almost getting to 20 years. And uh, yes, we thank God. <laughs> it's very interesting and very exciting being a military officer. If your mind is made up, you want to serve your country, as a military man, either in the Army, in the Navy, or the Air Force. The fundamental thing is discipline. Discipline, discipline, and discipline. Mm. Then we talk of patriotism. You must love your country. You must not be sectional. Yes, I come from a part of the country, but I could be posted anywhere to work, and wherever I'm posted to, it is incumbent on me to make sure I work to the best of my ability, to take that place as if that's even where I come from, to lead my men with honor, with dignity, and to carry out any assignment I'm given, you know, according to the rules of engagement and ensuring that the right thing is done, you know? So I think um, 
those are some of the things that uh, we need to consider. And uh, like I said earlier, the army is an interesting and exciting place. If you are disciplined, you will have the opportunity of traveling around the world, around Africa. As a young officer, I was in, in Liberia during ECOMOG. And I also came back again to Liberia as a member of the United Nations mission in Liberia. And uh, I went to Sudan too, as a member of the United Nations mission in Sudan. And that afforded me the opportunity of traveling in East Africa, because Sudan is not too far from, uh, from Kenya, from Uganda, from Rwanda. And uh, I made sure I used that opportunity of being in Sudan to travel to these countries, to Ethiopia also. And uh, probably if I had not been in the army, I wouldn't say uh, I would go to those countries, obviously. So it's quite interesting. And I have friends from all over the world. And I was promoted. My friends from Pakistan, from Uruguay, you know, from Egypt and other parts of the world, Zambia, Bangladesh. from Bangladesh, they called, they sent felicitations. And even in the course of my work, sometimes I ask them that, look, you had similar problem with ours. How were you able to resolve it? And we have an uh, interface, you know, discussions. And they also ask me questions. How have we been able to, to do it? Um, I'm not saying that uh, everything is perfect in, in our country. Yes, we have challenges, but we should also look at where we were before. I'm not saying that everything is okay. Things can be much, much better. But there was a time here in Abuja, you can't even go to church. You can't go to much, you know? I remember a particular episode in Kano when uh, one church was, uh, one mock, sorry, was, uh, was bombed and over 350 people died in one fell swoop. The Emir of Kano was crying, you know? So we can do much better, I agree, but we are also working very hard. Thank you very much, sir. Sir, yesterday, you know, I was, when they were showing your picture, a documentary, well, well, I was seeing a lot of things, how active you were, and you know, some of your friends were like, you hardly talk, probably. One of your friends from the Southwest, he said you guys went to the same primary, secondary school, mm -hmm. that you hardly talk, but you are very active. <laughs> so, and even in the picture I saw, I was seeing you just at the front. So how, how what's the secret? How easy it is for you to, to roll that way? <laughs> well, I think I've always been uh, a reserved guy. I remember you're talking about my good friend, Sheung Dosumu. Yes. We went to Federal Government yes. College yes. together, class of uh, 1986. And it is true, while in school, I was a bit quiet on the quiet side. I was not even a member of the cadet force. I was not, but along the line, I made up my mind to go to NDA, Nigerian Defense Academy. And uh, the trigger for that was I went with a friend who wanted to see a senior cadet in NDA. So I said, he asked me if I could tag along. I said, why not? And we went to NDA. Um, I think that was around 1984 or thereabouts, 84, 85. And I saw young men, almost our age, in that institution. Of course, everybody looking smart. Later, I got to understand, you know, we went on a Sunday. So Sunday, you have less work, so everybody can dress and look fine. On other days, the cadets are always being punished. But on that Sunday, they were looking smart, they were young, and the age was not too far from my own. And um, I said, look, I could come to this place. And um, I remember our principal at that time, his name uh, is late now, Mr. Alexander Ademuiwa. He was the principal. 
and uh, he said, look, they have started degree program in NDA now. So those of you who want to go to NDA, there is no problem, you can go. And you know the principals those days, they have, uh, we respect them a lot. So when he said that, I said, ah, principal has even said we can go there. I made up my mind for that. And I was lucky. I applied 1987. I left secondary school 1986. I applied 87. At my first attempt, I was very fortunate. I was taken. And that's when it started. And uh, spent my five years, had my degree, my first degree in, uh, in history, and then had the military training. And then I qualified as an officer. And uh, here I am today. Yeah. Yes, sir, thank you very much. This NDA you were talking about, I wanted to ask the question before, but thank God you talked about it. Sir, these days, NDA, lots of youths, young boys, they want to venture into things that they want to go on, but they're like, hi, you must know people, you must do, you must have millions. Sir, please, I want you to throw light into this, because a lot of people wish to go through NDA, but like, ha. Huh? The, the what it takes, you know, the process is too, the, ah, what do you know, and all that. What do you want to say about that? Well, um, I had the privilege of, of serving as an instructor in ND, and at one time I was even the chief instructor in charge of the army wing for about one year. So I have some little knowledge about that, and I will tell you, it's not true, it's just that the competition for place in NDA or places in NDA is very stiff. Mm. So many, Nigeria is a country of about 200 million people and I'm told about 60 or 70 percent are below the age of uh, 20 or thereabouts. So it tells you we have a huge number of youths who want to come into the military service and as officers, if you want to be a regular officer, it's true NDA. So the competition is just too much. So all I will say is that if you keep on trying, if you keep on trying, you don't need to pay a penny to anybody. My parents were not rich people, but I applied and my name came out. We, we are so many that wrote the exams. I was lucky to be one of the people that passed and I think about 50 of us were invited for interview. At the end of the day from Borno State, we were five, I think, I uh, 10. 10 that were selected and one reserve or so. Today, I think we are about six who are left, there are about. And, uh, so it is not true that uh, you must have millions, but it is true that you must be good. You must be smart. You must have your five credits. You must be able to defend the five credits. And uh, you should be smart. When I talk of smartness, you should be able to run able to answer some basic things that will convince the board if you pass that yes this is a candidate for officer uh, for officership being an officer is not easy because you lead men you lead men in war if you make mistakes people will lose their lives you know if you are a banker you make mistakes people will lose their money but if you are an officer in the front line you are supposed to take your men to the left or the right, you said go front up. It will lead to the death of people and they can't come back. So it has to be a little bit tough to come in. Yeah. Wow, thank you very much, sir. It's an amazing moment with you. All I could say with your story is that, let me just tell the youth at large that we should stop seeking for position. Rather, we should go for function. Because when we function well, Position will look for you because position will always marry function. So this Sorry. that is what I see. But these days, you know, we we young ones, we are not ready for the we are not ready for the process, we only want the product. We are not ready to be in the competition, we only want the cup. So and behind every successful story there must be a story behind it. There must be ups and down. So thank you very much. It's a wonderful moment with you, sir. And I really congratulate you once again. Your new office is just the least you can do. God is taking you to... <laughs> no, not even the sky is your limit. With what I saw yesterday, it's a congratulation once again. Thank you very much. But they say behind every successful man, there must be a woman. 
My name is um, Mrs. Halima Yahaya Ibrahim. I am a teacher by profession and I'm married to General Ibrahim. We get attracted to the glitz and glamour of the, we the wedding party, you know, the crossing of the sword and all that. You know, these military men, they can be very romantic and all that. They just like sweep you off your feet. I now start seeing this night in shining and more kind of thing. Eventually you get married, you enjoy the sword crossing and all that. It's beautiful, your friends are envious, you become the star. Then real life starts. <laughs> you settle into married life. But really they are the nicest people, they are the most responsive people you can ever marry. It's responsive, really. You don't, you never lack. Because they know they are not there. They are not around always. You are the mom at home. I am the mom at home, I'm the dad and all that. So they try as much to take care of everything from wherever they are. So it's like, it has become a, a kind of um, a relationship where when he's away, you miss him. When he comes home, it's like we are starting the love affair all over again. So it's really nice. It's always nice. You never get tired of having them around, really. And then being at home alone, over, you get yourself busy. You think about things to do that keep you busy. After some time when the kids start coming, your hands are full. Other things that start rolling, you take care of the kids, the home from the work and all that. And they help in their own way to make it easier. When they're around, they spend their time with you wholly. When they are gone, they keep in touch with the phone, when you buy a phone and all that. So it's really amazing. I think I love mm. that. So Ma, I want to ask this, you know, yesterday it was just like all thanks to the wild, all those adoring, appreciating you. And before a man can say that, it means you've been a good house manager, you've been the best, you know, managing him so well. So can you tell us a few of the tattoos scope, you know? <laughs> no, he made, it, he made it a lot easier for me. Wow. Yes, he did. I will tell you something I've never told anybody before. I have never asked him for anything without getting it. Hmm. He always delivers. He has never, not even once, not even once. So he has made it a lot easier for me. And at my own, I try to, whenever there's a problem at home, I try to solve it myself without having to disturb him. You know how their work is? It occupies a lot of their time and their mind. I know they have these emotions going up and down, home front in the, at the back of their minds. So I try to reassure him and tell him, look, it's okay. Just do your work. I'll take care of the home front. From his own family, from my family, he has nothing to worry about. Whatever is there to take care of, I do that. When he calls, we talk about it. If there's something I can't handle, then I will let him know at his own convenience when he calls and when he wants to talk about it. So that's the secret, more or less. Allow them to have their time. Give them ample space. Let them do their work at their own time. You talk with them and tell them what the problem is. If that problem is something I, you or I can't solve at home as a wife. But if something you can solve, fine, go ahead and take care of it. You don't have to disturb them. They don't need all that. Thank you very much. I think I learned a lot from, from you. Uh -huh. So how glad is it is to you in this new office? Because it's not easy. <laughs> Being in the northeast. Uh, I mean, how happy, how glad is it is to your heart in the new home? Okay, in rank he's yes, holding yes, now. Yes, yes, yes. For me, he's still my husband. Mm. For me, he's rank, he's my friend, he's my partner. I, sometimes I don't forget he's a general. You know, sometimes I know he's like, <laughs> it's, he's the same person. You know, I've, I, I said it yesterday. You know, when you're dating, you, you marry and you get married. And like, like, this is not the person I'm dating, he has changed, but he, I never had that problem. He's still the same person. He's very patient to an extent that I'm even taking advantage of it. <laughs> wow. I get it with a lot of things. You just like look at me and be like, Tch. and then it's gone. Worry, I don't overstep my boundaries, I dare not. He's a general, he's very soft. He's a, he's a giant teddy bear. <laughs> no, really, he is. I think that's one of the secrets to his success. Because I did a research to all successful men in the world. They are always been happy with their wife. Mm -hmm. They are always been, you know, very light with their home. And I think that's the secret to all success. Because women, when you let them know they have the most important tool on head, not even the sky is your limit. So that's what I see. So I think it's not just He's one of the, the winning strategies. Really, really. <laughs> he, makes it, he makes it a lot easier for me. He's not problematic at all. 
So thank you very much. You're welcome. I really, I really have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Congratulations you. once again, thank General. You. Thank you. It's a privilege. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, think I love this. <laughs> I feel like taking it. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. When I saw that, yes, I was like, can they make one for me? I'm supposed to have one too. Because yeah, as they say, uh, as they say, uh, I'm uh, rank higher than he is, so I'm supposed to have one. <laughs> yes, it's beautiful. Well, thank you very much. Um, thank you so much. I will wish you all the best. Amen. We hope you sir. grow in your career. Amen, yes. Sir. Become a very big brand. Amen, your own studio. And Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, thank sir. You so much. What we're really doing is that we're trying to, you know, give back to the society. I tell people there is no reason for failure. Mm -hmm. Don't give excuses that this is the reason why I fail. I if plan A fail, try plan B. Stop saying government, government. Do something for yourself. yourself. Absolutely. Be the best brand of yourself. Mm. I agree with you. I True. We youth, what we should be, we are the most important tool on earth. Mm -hmm. And we should be taking up space in our ramification. Mm. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I agree because if I tell you my story also, it's not just a story of success, success everywhere. Mm. I had mm. my own uh, uh, trials and tribulations. Mm. But I always told myself that, look, I must keep moving. I must keep pushing. Mm. You know, setbacks are part of life. Yes, yes. But it is how you react to such setback that matters. Yes, that's you true. Know? If you fall, stand up and continue moving. Mm. Because they have fallen, that's the end. Mm. Well, so I tell much. people, you know, failure is part of winning strategy. It yes. is. Every winner there must be, you must fail. Yes. And that failure is, is part of your strategy to oh, win. Absolutely. Yes. And, you know, Anytime you fail, there is a lesson to be learned there. Yes, yes. You yes. use that lesson very well, you will not fail it. Yes, so yes. That, absolutely. Yes, yeah, thank Indeed. you very much. Thank this you is, so much. Is that who you follow determines what follows you. I mean? So I tell you, you can <laughs> see these are part of my mentors. So <laughs> tell me the reason why, why I wouldn't want to move forward because they are moving every day. So when you know when uh, who you look at determines what you look like. Mm, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you, you too. So thank, thank you very pleasure. much. It's a pleasure. Ah, I really appreciate pleasure. It. Thanks, ma, for the hospitality. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you very much. You're I really welcome. So I love your outfits. I show I Thank you very much. All right, then. Thank yeah, you, too. Thank you. It's a great day. Yeah. <laughs>